Welcome. My name is Elise Chaya Bracha Adelson. Today's vinyasa flow focusing on hip stability and side bending to architecturally create meaningful boundaries in which to expand and also meaningful boundaries to help support and contain and receive the abundance of our breath and our being. You'll need a strap today or a belt. We'll start off making a loop. Make sure the loop is secure. About shoulder width, like inner shoulder width. Okay, so make sure it's, it's secure. Possibly a blanket if you need, especially in seated positions. And two blocks or two books for support, for support, but they're optional. We'll start off in a shape called, in yoga called Sukhasana, which means seat of joy or seat of ease, crossing one shin in front of the other, ankles underneath the opposite knee. So opposite ankle, opposite knee, and drawing or rather pressing the soles of your feet to the outer edges of the mat. So make your hips your posture, your seat of ease, a little bit more compact. Already we're beginning to create meaningful boundaries in which to be supported and to expand from. I'm pressing the outer edges of my feet down. If your knees are really high up and you're not comfortable, sit on an extra rolled blanket or mat. And we'll take the strap, so focusing on the hips and also the shoulders using the strap as a meaningful boundary in which to expand all above your elbows. So on the upper arm bones, you're gonna squeeze your arms towards straight, lift the lower collarbone to the upper collarbone and allow the ribs to be absorbed into the back body, back of the skull nice and long. Now energetically pull the strap apart, pull the strap apart, reaching your arms straight back without the ribs popping out like mine like to do right now and keep the back of the skull nice and long. Good. And now you're hugging the outer hips in, hinging at your hip creases and slowly, slowly begin to fold forward. Keep pulling the strap apart, right? Notice what's going on with the ribs. Make sure that your head is not dipping into the water. So resist the head collapsing. Keep the back of the skull in line with the back of the sacrum as you pull your arms apart for another three. Keeping the sitting bones heavy towards the ground. Two, nice long spine, upper back muscles awakening. And one, press down through the sitting bones, pull the strap apart with your arms and make your way on up. Fingertips can touch the ground for support switching whatever shin was in front. Opposite ankle under opposite knee. Okay, and then pressing the outer feet or the inner edges of the feet towards the opposite sides of the mat. Pull the strap apart. So first, lengthen your side body. You're creating architecturally more uh, space to receive your breath. Pull your arms apart. Back of the skull nice and long and hinging at the hip creases. Keep the chin slightly tucked in towards your chest. Ribs disappearing towards the back body for support. Top of the throat back. You're only going as far as easeful for your breath. For another three, two, pulling the strap apart, squeeze your arms towards straight, and one, slowly make your way on up. All right, free yourself from the strap. So we'll refer to the strap to remind us to use that sense of awakening the muscles, creating meaningful boundaries in which to expand. Coming onto your hands and knees. And a couple rounds of cat cows here. Moving in any way that feels good to you. A little circular movement. And for a moment, stand on your knees and prep the wrist, making light fists, bend the elbows. And as you lift the fist up, you're going to reach the knuckles down. And as the elbows come down, 
knuckles to the sky. It's almost like you're painting a fence. Call it Karate Kid. One more. Great, and now circle the wrist around three times each direction. And downward facing dog, placing your wrist slightly in front of your shoulders. Curl your toes under, bring the hips back, down dog. Pressing your hands down and your feet down. And imagine you're squeezing your outer arms in towards your ears, lengthen the spine and keep the knees bent, maintaining length in the spine as you lift your armpits or take the top of the thigh bones back without that changing the shape of your spine. So if it rounds your spine to straighten your legs, keep a softness in your knees. Float forward into plank pose. Imagine that you still have that strap that you're pulling apart. And notice the work of your upper body. Ask your belly and your legs to do the same amount of work. Downward facing dog, hips up and back. Two more times. Float it forward. Keep the back of the skull in line with your sacrum. And then downward facing dog. One more time. Float it forward. And downward facing dog. Walk your hands back towards your feet. And bring your hands to your hips, shoulder blades onto your back, long spine up to standing. Let's walk to the top of the mat, your top of the mat. Finding your mountain pose, placing your feet how you normally do. So that could be kids together or hip width apart. Shift the weight into your right leg. So now we're gonna bring awareness to the muscles that, some of the muscles that surround the hips. Standing on your right leg, straighten your left leg and reach the left leg forward. Notice what muscles are activated here around the glutes and the pelvis and let's switch sides. Whew. Notice which muscles turn on to help stabilize you. Alternating sides one more time, each side. And standing on your left leg, reach your right leg forward and back. And notice what muscles are awakened when you reach your leg forward and when you reach your leg back, switching sides. So we have special attention in waking up and bringing awareness to the meaningful boundaries that support your hip, your muscles. So this is gonna be more when you reach your leg back, the glute max. Now we'll fire up a little bit more of glute minimus and maximus or rather medius, glute medius and minimus. So standing on your left leg, reach your right leg slightly forward and turn it out. And notice what muscles are turned on on the right hip. You might notice it's on the right outer hip. So it's gonna be a little bit more glute medius and gluteus minimus and slowly releasing. Switching sides. Left leg slightly forward and turn it slightly out to the left. Notice what muscles are turned on there. We're gonna bring this awareness throughout the practice, the flow today. Bring it back to center. Again, standing on your left leg, right leg slightly forward, turn it out to the right and press down through the left leg, the left heel. And imagine you're coming into tree pose. So you're bending the right knee, hugging the right heel in like you're about to come into tree. Now keep that energetically, so without actually doing it, but energetically reach the right heel down and notice if those outer right hip muscles turn on. Good, and slowly releasing, switching sides. Left leg forward, turn it slightly to the left. Bend the left knee as if you're about to come into tree pose. Keep that and then energetically reach both heels, even the left heel towards the ground. Notice if the outer hip muscles are firing up for three, two and one nice slowly releasing place your feet how you normally do or how you would like to for mountain pose so feet could be together or hip width and same thing here fire up those muscles that you just awaken that you just brought awareness to hugging those outer hips in and then from there reach the arms up again fire up those muscles and notice if it affects 
the ability to reach the sides of your waist more towards the ceiling, towards the sky. Exhale, keep those legs alive, fold forward, forward fold. Keep those legs awaken and come into a halfway lift. As you come into your halfway lift, bring awareness to those outer hip muscles that you just woke up and place your hands on the ground, step back into plank pose. High push-up position. All that awareness, broadness through the chest like we did with the strap and awareness of awakening the muscles of the hips. Lower your knees down, lowering all the way down. Forehead down to the ground. Lift your hands lightly to hover over the mat. Press the tops of the feet down into the ground. Now keep the awakening. It's like the muscles that we woke up with the strap. Place the hands on the ground and make your way into your cobra. Keeping the back body muscles awaken and also the muscles of the hip, reaching the inner ankles back. And slowly release, make your way into downward facing dog. Hips up and back. Can you maintain the broadness in the chest as if you were using the strap? And can you awaken the muscles of the outer hips, especially as you melt the top of the thigh bones back? Inhale, lift your heels, bend your knees, and bottom of your exhale, either walk or hop. Top of the mat, halfway lift, and exhale, forward fold. Root down, rise up, extend in mountain pose, and exhale, arms to your side, hands to your heart. Again, pressing down through the feet, reach the arms up, waking up the muscles, outer hips hug in, exhale, hands to the heart, and fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, step back into plank pose. Good, broaden through the chest. Activate those outer hip muscles, hugging in, lowering down with or without knees. Lift the hands to hover for a moment, then place them down, curling on up into your cobra, and then downward facing dog. Hips up and back. You're rotating your inner biceps forward, press the hands down, broaden through the chest, firm those outer hips in, outer hips reaching up. Inhale, lift the heels, bend the knees, and bottom of your exhale, step hopper float to the top. Halfway lift, and exhale, forward fold. Root down, rise up, extend in mountain pose, and exhale. Arms to the side and hands to your heart. We'll explore similar concept opening through the chest and the support of the outer hips in chair pose. So first things first, reestablish that connection with the strap. So imagine you have the strap around your arms like we did before. Squeeze the arms towards straight and then lift the strap and the arms away from your back body without the ribs popping out. Good, now keep that awareness. Bring your hands, your arms closer to the sides of your body, and now squeeze the knees together as you reach your hips back, reach the arms forward or to where the ceiling and wall meet. And imagine again, you're firming those outer hips in like we did awakening in mountain pose, or rather, yeah, in the standing mountain pose, broaden through the chest, and ribs disappear to the back of the body towards for three more weight back into the heels two and one standing tall and bring your hands to your heart folding forward coming into halfway lift and exhale step it back into plank you could skip the high to low push-up if you like keep the chest broad coming into locust cobra or upward facing dog if you like and downward facing dog we will meet now lift your right leg up don't let the hips open up for this one squeeze those arms towards straight hug your legs in towards each other so the outer left hip reaches back you're awakening even the outer hip muscles in this shape Bend the right knee in towards the chest, shoulders float forward, right foot forward, 
and spin the back foot flat about 45 degree angle. Warrior one, just for one breath, awareness of waking up those outer hip muscles, reach to the sides of the waist, chest is broad, and exhale. Hands to the ground and step it back into downward facing dog. Lift your left leg up. Firm those outer hip muscles in. Press the hands down and forward. Keep the armpits lifted on your exhale. Left knee comes forward. Spin the back foot flat and rising on up into warrior one. From the outer hips in. Lengthen through the sides of the waist and exhale. Hands down to the ground, down dog, or take a high to low push up. Lowering with or without knees. You could do locust lengthen away from the mat, cobra or up dog, and downward facing dog. We meet. Lift your heels, bend your knees, exhale, step, hop, or float to the top. Halfway lift and forward fold. Root down, rise up, extended, and exhale, arms to the side, hands to your heart. Again, however you like to place your feet, feet together or hip width apart, finding, again, your chair pose. Bending your knees, reach the arms up, and then exhale, bring your hands to your heart, elbows reach out wide. Broadness through the chest, you press the palms together, broaden through the collarbones, and then press down through the heels as you firm the outer hips in, sides of the waist long, and twist on over to your right. So make sure your thumbs aren't hanging out in your armpit. Lift your heart up to your thumbs, squeeze the outer hips in, and allow the rib cage to rotate to the right. Keep the back of the skull nicely long for three, two, one. Chair pose. Sweep arms up, exhale, hands to the heart. Broaden through the chest, press through the heels, and turning with your rib cage to the left. So you're turning to the left now. Thumbs in front of the heart, so press down. Make sure the thumbs aren't hanging out in your armpit for three, two, and one. Chair pose, inhale, and stand tall. Straighten the legs, arms to the side, hands to your heart. Revisiting warrior one. You're standing on your right leg, and reach your arms by your sides. Lift the armpits and waken up. Imagine that you have the strap to awaken the upper back muscles. Reach the left leg forward. Turn the left leg slightly out to the left. Bending both knees and then reach the left leg back for your warrior one. Press down through the heels, press down through the feet. Reach your arms up now. Keep that broadness to the chest as if you have the strap. Outer right hip reaches back and in. So get those outer hip muscles awakening. And now bring your palms together and spread the fingers. Now bend your elbows and take the thumbs to the back of your skull. And again, we're going to use those meaningful boundaries of the hips, outer hips awaken. To lift and lengthen the sides of the body a little bit more as you curl over a high bar. Let those ribs soften to the back body for three, two, and one. Releasing arms by your sides in the same way you came in. You can come onto the ball of the back foot and step it to the front of the mat. Other side, pressing through your left leg, right leg forward and slightly out. Bend both knees. Reaching the right leg back, finding your warrior one. You might need to bring the left foot slightly more to the left. Reach the arms up and then awaken those muscles that we brought awareness to of the outer hips. Again, you might need to bring that left foot a little bit more wide. Palms together, fingers spread wide, thumbs to the back of your skull. Now look inward, drop your chin slightly to see your ribs softening to the back body. Front body softens to the back body, that area of support and community. Press down through the legs, outer hips to support, lengthen through the sideways. As you lift your chin slightly and curl the back of the head, back of the heart, back for three, two, and one. Slowly releasing. And we were going to step forward, but let's step back into downward facing dog. 
You can come into a plank pose. They can have a little push up if you like. Lift the hands, hover, cobra up dog, downward facing dog, and lift the heels, bend the knees, bottom of the exhale. Step hopper, float, top of the mat. Halfway lift and forward fold. Root down, rise up, extended. And exhale, arms to your sides, hands to your heart. All right, grab onto the strap again. Stand in the center of your mat, facing the long side of the mat, and bring your feet wide. Step your feet out wide and parallel. Let's take the strap again and thread our arms through. Bring your arms through like we did in the beginning. Be mindful of where the tail is so you don't step on it. Squeeze the arms towards straight again. Let the ribs disappear to the back body. Again, you're lifting your armpits lightly. Ribs soften in, squeeze the arm strap straight, and then pull the strap apart. Lift up now onto the ball of your right foot. Turn your right heel in, just however you need to. Make your way into a warrior two-like shape here. So just however you need to. And then straighten out the front leg. Recruit the muscles of the legs, and we'll come into a variation of triangle pose. So the legs are strong. Wake up those outer hip muscles as you lengthen both sides of your waist as evenly as you can, and reach the arms away from your back body. Maintain broadness through the chest, keeping the legs strong, and turning your rib cage more towards the left. Breathing here. Pressing down through the legs for three, both sides of the waist, nice and long, two, and one. Bend that right knee, make your way on up to standing. Same thing here. We're gonna firm and wrap middle of right seat down and under like we did standing. You're waking up the outer right hip muscle and melting the top of the left thigh bone slightly to the back body. Like extended side angle, you're gonna come slightly forward about halfway forward here, waking up the muscles that surround the hips, lengthen the side waist, turning the rib cage more towards the ceiling and pull the arms apart. Breathing here for three, two, and one. Slowly press through the heels, come to standing. Let's switch sides, feet parallel. One way to transition is to stay on the Ball the left foot and pivot the left heel in. Bend the front knee to a, towards a square, your warrior two stance. Then straighten out the front leg. Again, checking in, lengthen the side body, pull the strap apart. Recruit the strength and muscles and support of your legs. Hinging over your left thigh bone, keep the legs strong, making your way into a triangle pose variation. Firming and wrapping, middle of left seat down and under, pressing through the right heel, sides of the waist to the back body, reach the arms back behind you without the ribs popping out. Breathe in here for three, two, one, bend through the left knee, come on up like a warrior two like stance and extended side angle. Squeeze the arms towards straight, press through the right heel, firm and wrap, middle of your left seat down and under. Breathing, turn the rib cage without the ribs popping out towards the ceiling for three, two, one. Press down and come on up. Feet parallel, maybe slightly, toes slightly turned in, but the rotation comes from the upper thigh bones. Again, pull the arms apart, squeeze the arms towards straight. Lift the arms away from your back body, ribs in, and then pull up through the legs, hinging at your hip creases folding forward. You might find that the palms want to start to turn. That's okay. They keep the legs super strong, shifting the weight slightly forward so you're not dumping into your hips or the back of your knees. Pull the strap apart, press the heels down. Hug those outer hips in. Feel the inner thigh spinning in, back and apart. Keep broadening through the chest for three, 
and two, strong legs, and one, press to the heels, long spine, pull the strap apart, belly and ribs in, and bring yourself on up to standing. Then toe heel the feet together, free yourself from the strap, but allow the imprint of that action to inform the rest of the practice. Feet together, hip width. Let's check in with what our chair pose feels like now. Bend the knees, reaching up from the outer hips in, stay broad through the chest, and exhale. Standing tall, release your arms to your sides. Let's take it to the top of the mat again. Again, chair pose, bend the knees, and fold forward. Notice if there's any difference in this forward bend compared to the first couple of class. Halfway lift. And as you exhale, step it back into downward facing dog. Take a hot, a low push up if you like. All right, vinyasa, whatever you need right now. Wag the tail for me. Downward facing dog. Lift your right leg up, keep the hip square, hug those outer hips in, bend the right knee into the chest, stepping the right foot forward. Warrior one to warrior two. Warrior two, have the palms shining forward. Back leg really clear and strong and hug those outer hip muscles in. Right fingertips touch just for a second, inner right foot, press the back leg, come on up. Make it a little bit bouncy. Good, we'll do four more of those for four, three, two, back leg strong. And one, keep your right fingertips to the inside of the right foot on the ground or a block. Spin left palm forward and left bicep over left ear. Pressing right forearm and right knee in towards each other to help firm and wrap middle of right seat down and under. Both sides of your waist nice and long and then spin your ribs towards the ceiling. Keeping the back of the skull nice and long broadness through the chest as if you still have the strap there. All right, so I'm pressing my right shoulder back for another three, two, one. Left arm up, press to the back foot. Come on up, straighten the legs. Reverse triangle for a moment. And exhale, hands down to the ground, step it back, down dog, or take a vinyasa. Hide a little push up and downward facing dog. Left leg reaches up, keep the hips square. Left knee to the chest and forward, spin the back foot flat. Coming on up into warrior one to warrior two. I'm gonna change directions here. Finding your warrior two, like bouncy extended side angles, touching left fingertips inside of left foot. Come on up, pressing through that back leg. Down and up. Four more for four and three and two and one. Stay down there. Right palm forward, right bicep over right ear. Firm and wrap, middle of left seat down and under. Press left forearm and left shin bone together. Both sides of the waist nice and Long, spinning your rib cage to the ceiling to the right. For another three, two, one. Right arm reaches up, reach it back behind and come to standing. Reverse triangle for a moment, side body nice and long. Exhale, hands down to the ground, downward facing dog, or had a low push up in between and come down to your knees. Cross at your ankles and make your way onto your bottom. How you were sitting before, you may want the same kind of support. And face the long side of the mat. And taking your, let's say, let's keep the left knee in and extend your left leg out. 
So your sitting bones will be on the edge of your rolled blanket or mat. Left leg out and slightly wide. Take your hands to help assist a little bit more internal rotation of your thigh bones, especially on the extended leg. So make sure you're resting your left leg in the middle of the leg. A lot of times we start off externally to externally rotated. Fingertips to the side, now lengthen the sides of the body, maintain that length. Hug the outer hips in and now turn your ribs, your inner body to the left. And you're gonna stay here, maintain the length on the sides of the body or begin to walk your legs forward, your legs, your arms forward, keep the chest broad. You can keep the back of the skull best you can in line with the back of your sacrum. Breathing here, so slowly, slowly, using those two key points we've had today of the outer hips firming in and broadness to the chest and carry that into this shape. And deepen a little bit more. And make sure you're not collapsing. There is an element of hugging in, especially the outer hips, finding length, that's the third key point through the sides of the body and broadness through the chest. Two more full but not forceful cycles of breath. You know, one side will be shortening on the sideways, but best you can maintaining length on both sides evenly and slowly releasing, coming on up. Keep the left leg as it is. Place the sole of the right foot on the ground. You can have left fingertips behind you for support. Right heel about in line with right sitting bone and turning the toes out for this variation to be in the same direction as the right knee as much that is comfortable. Right arm to the inside of the right leg and using your hands again to root down, hug the outer hips in, lengthen through the sideways, turning to the left, breathing here. Good. And now we'll turn to the other direction. And you can hold on with a strap, like so underneath your left foot, or hold on to your left ankle, right hand down and turn to the right. Press down through the right heel like crazy and firm the outer hips in, and the left leg is a strong mountain leg. Now you can stay here or press down through the right heel like crazy. Lengthen to the spine, keep the spine nice and long. Now you're holding on to your left, your left hand to the right ankle with your hand or a strap. Begin to bend your left elbow down towards the ground and reach your right arm overhead. It may or may not touch the right, the left foot. Okay, but press down through the right heel, slowly, slowly. Press down through the right heel. Okay, hug the outer hips in. Lengthen through the sideways and turn your ribs towards the ceiling. Broadness to the chest. So imagine you have that strap that you're pulling apart to broaden through the chest. Slightly tucking the chin in. Rod through the chest, pressing through that right heel, like the outer hips in, sides of the waist back, rod through the chest for another three, breathing, two, and one, press to the right heel, and mindfully make your way woo, back on up. Have the hands back behind you, and just pause, notice any shifts or changes, any amount of the pose is the pose, meeting yourself where you are. That's, that's the main part of the practice, is breathing as you meet yourself where you are. If you're not breathing or the breath becomes a little dramatic, get off at the bus stop before. Do the thing before. All right, let's slowly release, switching sides. Now your right leg will be extended out a little bit wide to the right, left knee is bent. Hands by the sides, do that adjustment so you're your extended leg, you're resting on the middle of the leg. Press down through the hands, lengthen through the spine and turn your body, your inner body 
to the right. Stay here, this side might be different. Or maintaining that hugging in, lengthening through the side waist, ribs softening in, and broadness to the chest folding. Breathing here, keep the back of the skull nice and long. Breathing into all sides of your body. Again, checking in, creating those meaningful boundaries, firming those outer hips in. Architecturally creating more length through the side body, broad into the chest, breathing to receive, even in the challenging postures, space for your breath. Making sure you're leaving enough space for yourself to settle into yourself, slowly releasing, walk it in. Now take the left foot onto the ground, left heel, close to your left sitting bone, as close as comfortable. Left toes, left knee about in the same line. Resting right leg or activated middle of the right leg onto the ground. Right fingertips behind you, left arm in front of your left leg. Hug the two together. Press down from the outer hips as you're hugging into midline, turning for a breath or two to the right. So this is the opposite direction in which we're gonna lean into for three. Press to that left heel, two, and one. Slowly release. And we're gonna switch directions, holding onto the right ankle with your hand or strap, left hand behind you. First, press down and lift. Lengthen, turn, and bend the right elbow. Make sure the right foot's not collapsing to the right. Strong mountain leg. Side body nice and long, holding onto a strap or your ankle. And then you could reach overhead. This side might be really, really different. I'm surprised on this side. I'm gonna meet myself where I am today. Press down through the left heel. I'm gonna readjust myself on the mat. Firm those outer hips in. Firming those outer hips in. Lengthen through the side body and then broaden through the chest as if you had that strap. Press through the left heel, breathing into the spaces in between your ribs. Good, and you can play around with letting that left hip lift off. For three, broaden through the chest, two, and one, press through the left heel like crazy, come on up, and pause, hands behind you, lift up. Noticing the effects of your efforts. We don't need to plow through all the postures all at once. We're finding power and strength and noticing and pausing. And slowly releasing. Let's extend both legs out if you need to. Turn around, sit the back of the mat. You may need a block or two here for a supported forward fold. Again, sitting, sitting bones on the edge of the blanket or block or whatever prop you're using. Block in between your shins. You could also bring the feet wider if you need. And we'll take a forward fold. You may need to bend the knees here. Press down through the hands, press the heels down. Lengthen through the side body, let the ribs Disappear to the back body. Maintaining broadness through the chest like we did before. And then reach up and then reach towards your feet. And I just set up, made a little tower for myself to rest my head down. I'm bending my knees to start off with. Firming the outer hips in. Ribs soften in as I lengthen the sides of my body. And then I can pull using a strap or my hands on my feet to broaden through the chest. Keeping the back of the skull nice and long. Again, creating meaningful boundaries in which to expand. So the boundaries become less meaningful if you are not breathing. <laughs> so do the thing you did before. Get off at the bus stop before. Allow the ribs again to disappear to the back side of the body. Activate the muscles 
of the outer hips. Hug those outer hips in as you hinge at your hip creases. Lengthen the sides. Pull your arms energetically apart for another three, two, and one. Slowly releasing. Make your way on up. And finding now your resting pose, your resting shape. Feel free to take any other posture you feel like you need. I'm gonna use a blanket folded up to my shoulders. You can extend the legs wide, take up lots of space. This is your chance to Allow the practice to be integrated into your body. All the stuff that you just did, all the exploring, all the awareness, all the information to settle into your body. First step in the process of letting go is accepting support, external and internal, ground and breath. All those insights, any information that rests in your body, give it over to the ground and let your body go. Let your body melt. Trust that those insights and that, that information will be there when you need it. But right now, give it over, let it go, soften from the inside out. Soften your face, the space in between your ears. Allow your bones to be heavy below the earth. Inviting more space in between top and bottom teeth. You are supported in whatever process you are going through. And stay here as long as you are able to, as you would like to. If not, slowly begin to deepen your breath, bring movement back to fingers and toes, gently turn your head side to side. And with awareness, bending your knees, hug them into your chest, give yourself a hug of gratitude for investing this time on your mat. With awareness, roll on over to one side, pause. Make your way on up to a comfortable seated position. Eyes could be closed or soft gaze. Overlap your hands on top of your heart. Think of one thing in your life that you are grateful for, no matter how big or small. And we'll end together one cleansing breath. First, empty out all the air from your lungs. Inhale through your nose, fill up. And exhale, ha. As always, gratitude for practicing together. May it all be a benefit to us and everybody else around us. Namaste. Thank you for joining. So honored to breathe and move together. If you haven't yet, please subscribe for more movement, breath, and yoga together. Have a great day.